bright and early episode two of Loki became available on Disney Plus, so let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comments section. Let me know what did you think about episode two of Loki as well as Loki in general up to this point in time. This is a spoiler review, so feel free to spoil away down below in the comment section. No need for spoiler warnings. You have been warned right now. With that said, if you're new to my spoiler reviews, I'll give my general thoughts on the episode and then I just kind of walk through the specific things that happen. I'll have time codes down below so you can skip ahead if there's something in particular you want to hear my thoughts on. With that said, let's go ahead and get started with my general thoughts on the episode. And as I said in my initial spoiler free review for the first two episodes of Loki, I thought that this episode was a real nice companion to the first episode. Episode one did kind of all the world building, established the rules, the stakes, the relationships, the dynamics, and just kind of put some mysteries and teases out there. Episode two then takes us on the journey of the investigation. We've established that rules of the timeline and there's an evil Loki variant out there trying to mess it up. And now we send Loki and Mobius out on the job to try and track this person down. And so we go and investigate crime scenes. We're trying to figure out what's going on. They test some hypotheses. And then we go to our final showdown where based off all the rules that have been established, it turns things upside down one more time with what happens in the final five minutes in two different senses of our reveal of who this Loki variant is, as well as what this Loki variant does at the end of it. And so I just thought that the two go together really nicely and create that cliffhanger, we go, what's going to happen next? Like, okay, you set me up to think we're heading in one direction. We went in that direction for one episode. And then I have no idea what's next in light of what you just showed me. This thing's going bananas. And so, as I said in my spoiler-free review, easily this is my favorite of the premieres of the Marvel Disney Plus shows that they've done. WandaVision, the premiere was three episodes. That's what, when I say premiere, I'm talking about what they sent to critics to initially review what they perceived of as that first impression that they wanted critics to talk about. WandaVision was the first three episodes. It, it just like, you know, felt like you're jumping into the deep end of a pool and like, well, I don't know how to swim, but they'll throw you in the deep end. They'll throw me in the deep end to teach me how to swim. That's what WandaVision felt like a little bit is I didn't even know what to make of it. Falcon and Winter Soldier, after two episodes, I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. I, I like the characters. I like the action, but but where are we going with this? And then with Loki, just much more efficient in establishing rules, establishing stakes, establishing consequences, and then putting us on that journey and then giving us twists, turns, reveals, all of it. So it's just covering a lot of ground, raising questions that you actually want answers to. So... Definitely, this was my favorite of the bunch, and the first two episodes, I just thought, complemented each other really nicely to have a solid kickoff to this show. From there, let's get started walking through the episode, and we'll start at Renfest in 1985. So the episode kicks off, and as I mentioned, we are at a Renfest in 1985. We go into a tent, a series of TVA agents show up, and then very quickly mischievous things start to take place and we need a hero starts playing as someone starts taking out all the TVA agents and at the end of it ends up kidnapping one of the agents. Important plot point for the future. I don't know what it is, but last week, or at least I saw this episode last week, and so there was three different things that plays this exact same song as this episode that I saw, and then the Masters of the Universe trailer they put out used the song, and then the Guardians of the Galaxy video game all used this exact same song in this one week period of time. I don't know what that's about. So it kicks off immediately, and we know we're like, we're on the mission. Like, this was established in the previous episode. This event happens, so now Loki and Mobius need to go into action. So we cut to the TVA. Loki is doing his homework, 
research, watching Miss Minutes and having interactions with her about the rules of the TVA. And they, they pause to like, what's the thing that they want to remind the audience of? That's whenever, whenever you're watching a show like this and they're having a lot of exposition, there's a lot of rules to the universe. The thing that they go back to and remind you of at the beginning of a new episode that's probably very important. That probably ties into something. So what's the thing that they in particular have a conversation about, like the nexus redlining? When there's a variation, if it gets past this red line, there's consequences. They only have so much time to reset things before things get really bad. That's the thing they wanted to pause to make sure that Loki remembered, thus making sure that the audience remembered it and kind of affirms the fact that if it crosses the red line, things are damaged beyond repair and therefore the timeline is destroyed and reality as we know it is destroyed. Now, I think an important note, whenever they give these rules, these are the rules as they're understood by the TVA who are controlled by the timekeepers, created by the timekeepers to do the bidding of the timekeepers that doesn't mean that's how this actually works. I'm pretty sure where all this show is going is that the timekeepers aren't so great after all. The TVA, while not themselves realizing they're the bad guys, are doing the bidding of dictators trying to control something for the purpose of power. So the idea of the TVA referring to reality as we know it, it's destroyed. They're talking about the control of the TVA, not actual reality being destroyed, in particular because, as we are very well aware of, the Avengers and Thanos and Captain America all had fun with the timeline. TVA didn't do anything about it because the timekeeper said it was okay. So it's not that changing the timeline destroys reality, but if you define reality, if you define the timeline as the sacred timeline, as the thing that they determined, well then, yeah, by definition, if what they want is changed, that is has been destroyed. So you have to think, there's a philosophical side to all of this. There's a side to it that's also based off the TVA's entire ontological or uh, epistemological base, their understanding of truth and what it is. All these rules are based off what they've been told. Their epistemological base, their understanding of knowledge is entirely what they get from the timekeepers and they are not ones that become philosophical and debate reality till Loki shows up, but we'll talk about that later on. So I think even as they, they talk about this, why are we talking about Miss Minutes? Why are we talking about the the timeline changing red lines because the audience needs to remember that because something's going to happen with that later in the episode. Number two, you have to remember this is all TVA being controlled. Loki even calls those videos propaganda later. You have to understand, like, if you just accept the rules that are being established by the TVA, you're just accepting the propaganda. So there's a sense in which we need to pay attention to the rules because they tie into the order of what we're watching, which is through the perspective of the TVA up to this point in time. That does not mean they're act that's the rules should be taken at face value. Anyway, so Loki and Mobius suit up to go to the investigation. There's some fun little interactions in all of this where you have Loki um, you know, putting on the jacket and it, it's this variant on the back. It's a little banter. Just all those little touches. A lot of fun. And then they pause. Pause once again to, to describe to us the reset charges. They go down and they start joking around about how Loki didn't do his homework and they're not sure he actually watched the videos and they're annoying, they're propaganda. And then they pause. They're like, hey, what is this reset charge do and so loki once again tells the audience because loki watched a bunch of videos about it we didn't explains to the audience one more time what these things do and how they heal time by resetting what was there but you only have so much time to do that very important for where this episode's going at the end why on earth are we talking of all the technology or why are we talking about this one because it ties into the end of the episode. You need to make sure the audience understands what happens at the end of the episode. So anyway, they go into the tent and 
they see all the, the damage stuff. They're like, Loki, what can you perceive about this? Loki goes off on one of his little mischievous, let's manipulate them. He's trying to see how far he can push them. Like, how close to the red line can we get? What happens if we cross the line? Can he talk them into crossing the red line? Can I talk them into letting me see the timekeepers? Can I talk them into negotiating my deal so I don't get erased at the end of all of this? He's doing all of his Loki tricks. It's pretty obvious to the TVA that's what he's doing. It's pretty obvious to the audience that's what he's doing. Mobius takes his time. He's let's him, let's let's hear it out. Let's him talk for a little while. And then at the end of it, he's like, this guy's lying. Reset it. Let's get out of here. And so you just kind of see Loki, he's playing ball, but he's not really playing ball. He, he's he's always up to his, his schemes as you can full-blown imagine that he would be. So it comes to a conversation between Mobius and his boss. I don't know the lady's name up to this point in time. And obviously Loki didn't behave. Therefore, she's not happy about it. She's not crazy about this scheme that's going on here. And more importantly, apparently the timekeepers are very, 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 very concerned about this Loki variant and what's going on. Apparently they don't normally pay super close attention to this stuff, this Loki variant. They are watching this one super duper 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 closely. And it just kind of leads into some conversations about the world of the TVA and even their worldview. So you kind of have this little conversation about like, he wants some of the memorabilia, but it's all in her office. And like, okay, what exactly does that mean? Where is this from time variance? What, what exactly are we talking about there? But then they kind of go into it as Mobius is trying to defend Loki. He's talking about, yeah, sure. In the timeline, in the sacred timeline, he's just this liar and deceptive guy, but that doesn't mean he can't change. And then TVA agent boss lady is like, well, it was determined in the sacred timeline that he was going to be this manipulative guy. And if that's what the timekeepers determined, that's what it is. Kind of establishing the TVA themselves are strictly determinists. And it's determined by the timekeepers and they just accept it and go with it. Mobius doesn't seem fully convinced of this deterministic worldview. He seems to think that there's a bit more to it than that. And people, as much as he'll talk differently about it later on, that they do have some amount of free will in this process. And that's where this shows so much more philosophical than I was expecting going into it. And even some of the conversations that I've heard from people on the Internet about it. Some people haven't been crazy about, well, you know, if the timekeepers determine the timeline, well, pff, the, nothing matters. And everything, all the sacrifices just doesn't matter. Right. Like determinism. Right. Free will's gone. Right. Philosophical discussions. You can take it at face value and just say, well, they said it, therefore it's resolved. Or you can take it as the, the show itself is exploring free will, determinism, different views of how all of this works, religious perspectives. Even in this episode, they start talking about if you take any of our worldviews and our, any of our religious belief systems of where we came from, they're kind of wacky, which I've been saying that for years. <laughs> if you don't know, I was a pastor and it's like, yeah, no matter what you believe, it's pretty wacky. We exist. That's wild. <laughs> like how we got here, we've got all kinds of beliefs about it, but it's pretty wild that no matter what someone says, you kind of go, that's weird. What I believe, it's weird. What you believe, it's weird. And so it's a show that it's it's like exploring these ideas. If you just take it as what it said it, therefore it's resolved. I don't I don't think that's what the show's doing. It it's telling you what the TVA believes. Loki's countering back against it, and the show's exploring it. That's good. That's good to explore the philosophy, the religious beliefs, all that stuff inside the MCU. And that's what you can do with a TV show. And even amongst the timekeepers, even amongst the TVA, so you, tight TVA, not timekeepers. I don't know what the timekeepers are talking about just yet. But even amongst the TVA, they're discussing reality as we know it, where we came from, all these philosophical questions. I think that's kind of a lot of fun. So anyway, TVA boss lady doesn't still doesn't really like this plan but he's like loki do i believe in him i'm not quite sure but i believe he believes in himself enough for the two of us and hey if he causes trouble i'll delete him myself and you you could it's it's one of those lines that you go okay does he is he really just working loki and he doesn't care about him is he saying that just for his boss lady so try to understand exactly what's kind of going on with mobius because it seems like he has a certain fondness for loki 
Then again, he's also a TVA agent, what I'm assuming is just a metaphorized version of something to exist and that doesn't know what his actual natural form is. I have no idea um, because he's not from our universe. He's from this other thing, other dimension. So I don't know what to make of him making those statements, but I found it interesting. So it leads into more conversations between Loki and Mobius as Loki's new job is to do a bunch of research and so Mobius is like, hey, man, I know you're just trying to work me so you can get to the timekeepers to sweet talk them, to take over the TV. I know what you're doing. I've been watching you a long time. But, yeah, it's not going to happen. But I appreciate that you're trying to be clever and everything. Hey, I got a job for you. Sit down, read all these files. Tell me what you can figure out. Loki wants to try and keep working his scheme. So he keeps trying to research things he can't research. They won't let him do it. They just keep giving him more of these case files that he's supposed to be looking at and reading through them. He puts it together. That leads to this fun scene where he goes to talk to Mobius in the cafeteria. Mobius just wants to eat a salad, something I can certainly relate to and understand. Loki wants to talk to him about his plan. So he steals his salad. It just leads to all the, the 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 reactions from Mobius is like, come on, it's just my, it's not a metaphor. It's my salad. Let me eat. I want that. I loved all of that. I loved all of that stuff. The way Owen Wilson delivered it. I thought it was amazing. And then Loki goes on to explain how Loki variant is hiding within apocalypses. And the idea of if our time reset bombs, the whole idea is to stop the time stream from variating. We reset the whole thing so it can't go down the direction. What if you find the moments in time where everything's going to be destroyed anyway? There's nowhere for things to deviate if you go right before something's going to be destroyed anyway. So all you have to do is go to an apocalypse and you can hang out there for chill for a little while and then it gets destroyed. Any, any changes you make are just destroyed anyway because it's an apocalypse by definition. So let's just find the different apocalypses. Ta-da! We found where he can hide. Uh, um, well, he or she can hide. It's like That's kind of clever in light of the rules that they've established and the purpose of the TVA. That's a clever thought, Loki, and a schemer is the one that would come up with it. So they decide to test out their theory. They go to Pompeii. And Mobius wants to keep it chill. Loki's like, hey, if we're going to test it out, let's test it out. So he runs around, starts causing all kinds of destruction. Volcano erupts. No variations. And hypothesis is tested. And they realize this Loki variant probably hiding inside of an apocalypse somewhere. But which one is it? This leads to another one of our philosophical discussions between Loki and Mobius surrounding jet skis of all things because earlier in the episode Loki's reading a jet ski magazine that was on Mobius's desk so Loki's like why are you reading a, a jet ski magazine like what do I do? let's see so apparently Mobius loves jet skis their design their functionality he loves them but he's never ridden one because he can't go into the timeline to do that if he started doing that that would of course would break the timeline he would suddenly be a variant and have to be wiped out himself and so it kind of starts off on this kind of exploration of each of their different worldviews and how Mobius has this very firm religious belief in the timekeepers and that they know what's best. He's supposed to do what they're saying. They've decided this path. They're currently writing the epilogue and we're kind of on that journey and making sure it doesn't break off from what it's supposed to be. And... Therefore, even though jet ski, in his mind, jet skis are what we're fighting for, but he's never been able to actually ride a jet ski. And so he's very much doing what he's told, following the rules, never challenged his belief system. Even kind of dives into this whole exploration of free will where Loki's like, so there's no free will? He's like, well, it's not quite that simple. That's oversimplification. But, you know, there's a timeline that's been determined and we play our part in it, leading to, to where all of this is headed. It's like, okay, so... Loki's, yeah, so that means anything on the sacred timeline, no free will. Only us at the TVA have free will. Well, you know what, that's oversimplified. But you just see immediately the philosophy of it, of like taking ideas that in college classrooms they talk about all idea, all the, all the, all the idea, all the time, and creating a story where you put the ideas out there for people to wrestle with. That's, that's fun. Some people on the internet 
hate it because they're like, are you saying there's no free, are you saying everything's determined and then nothing in, in Infinity War, in Endgame mattered, the whole, it's all none of it. It's a philosophical discussion through an episode. It's We're exploring ideas that might plan out to be true. They might not. You're saying that the TV agent, Mobius, he's right about all of the philosophy and belief. <laughs> you're saying that because he was told by the timekeepers? I, I, I don't take everything at face value that he says is being correct and the right interpretation. Seems pretty clear that he has a limited perspective on reality. You can just talk to some of these other TV agents that don't even know what a fish is. So do I trust TVA agents when it comes to their philosophical and beliefs? Not so much because it's limited. So anyway, they, they have a nice conversation about free will. And through the whole thing, Loki's like, hey, no one's fully bad. No one's fully good. Seems to be kind of at the center of this show when Loki's your protagonist. Look, this Loki in particular, phase one Loki, not the best guy on the planet. T TV agents are established as the authority figures here. But I'm not thinking that long term the TVA is going to be the good guys in this thing. I'm pretty sure we're going to find out government structure bad. That seems to be a major theme in these Marvel Disney Plus shows and WandaVision, Falcon and Winter Soldier, government agencies all made really big mistakes. Pretty sure that's probably going to tie into this one as well. And so the idea of not everyone's fully bad, not everyone's fully good. And through the conversation, Mobius puts it together. Wait, I found some candy. All we have to do is overlap candy. Apocalypses will find our Loki variant. So that piece of candy that was left behind in the previous episode, that mattered followed the clues, and it's going to bring us to the final little section on here. This will bring us to future Alabama. Apparently, this is where the candy took place, and a hurricane is about to wipe out this entire area. Therefore, a nice place for Loki variant to hide. Mobius wants to take Loki with him, but cop lady that arrested Loki at the beginning of the show, not a big fan of that plan. She's like, no, you're coming with me, even though that doesn't go very well. So, Loki variant starts taking over bodies, and so takes over some guy at the store, then takes over cop lady, and it leads to a series of conversations between Loki phase one and Loki variant, or evil Loki variant. And a lot of fun to see two Lokis go back and forth a little bit, each of them too arrogant to ever think that the other one is better, even though they're talking to themselves. Each of them is trying to scheme that the other one, each of them is talking down to the other one. Each of them is trying to recruit the other one. Each of them has a different master plan in light of the information that they have. And so you're just seeing Loki against Loki doing all this stuff, but pretty clearly evil Loki seems to have a lot more information and is even more condescending. Our phase one Loki's like, hey, why don't you team up with me? Be my right hand man. We'll take down the timekeepers. We'll be in charge of time. So that was pretty great, right? Evil Loki's like, nah, not interested. That is not my particular evil plan that I'm going for. Meanwhile, Mobius is walking around and they're in this, this supermarket of sorts with all these people that are about to die. And they're afraid. And the TV agents there, like some of them would be like rude to the people there. And Moby's like, hey, man, what do you, don't be rude to them. Like, what do you, what do you, don't do that. And the guy's like, what does it matter? They're, they're afraid. They're acting whiny. Like they're about to die. It doesn't matter. And he's like, wait, right. But they're, they're still people. And you can even see Mobius is that different. Like he cares a little bit more. He doesn't view himself just as authority guy with power. He's thinking about people. He actually cares about people in the process. Through this, they discover the TV agent that was taken earlier. They go talk to TV agent. TV agent is like, I, I said where they are. I said where they are. Apparently, TV agent revealed the location of the timekeepers to Loki variant. Key piece of information. Loki variant now knows where timekeepers are. Probably not a good thing. Probably could have some consequences later on with wherever all of this is going, in particular in light of what is about to take place. So eventually our two Lokis start fighting each other. And as Loki phase one is getting thrown around, he keeps looking around, he sees time reset bombs everywhere. Like, what time reset bomb? Look, what's going on here? Okay, that doesn't, I'm not quite sure what this is all about. And he's like speculating concepts, what might be taking place. And then she's like, you have no idea what's going on. Or Loki variant says, you have no idea what's going on. 
now takes off hood reveals, ta-da! Lady Loki is our variant. It's a female version of Loki, all the scheming, but lady. And kind of a big reveal in another sense. They literally showed like a graph of Loki variants or graphics of different versions of Loki at the beginning of the episode. And one of them was like a monster. <laughs> so like, this doesn't mean a lot. Loki's also a shapeshifter. Uh, like everything about Loki says this is not that interesting of a reveal in the one sense. But because as an audience... Our understanding of Loki is Tom Hiddleston. We've had him in the MCU for 10 years now. 10 years of Tom Hiddleston equals Loki. So despite the fact that we all know he's a shapeshifter, we all know his actual natural state is blue. We also know the things in Norse mythology, the economy, there's all this stuff we actually do know that he doesn't have to look like Tom Hiddleston. So, but we're just so used to Tom that as soon as we see this different version of Lady Loki, mind blown, crazy times. Um, so it's interesting, fun reveal, because it's, it's just not what you're expecting. You're expecting to see a second Tom Hiddleston, and it was not a second Tom Hiddleston. I think I find it interesting about this. I don't know. I don't know exactly if they intended this or what's going on with it, but you just look at how much of Phase 4 is a lady version of some Phase 1 character, uh, some Phase 1 hero or villain. It, is, it gets a little bit weird at a certain point in time because you've got She-Hulk coming. You've got Jane Foster's going to be Thor. They're working, what is it, Ironheart? And it's not exactly Lady Iron Man, but female character in Stark-esque iron suit technology type thing. They have multiple, and there's several more that you can kind of go on from there of finding female version of what came before. And so then we get to this one and it's like, what's the big reveal? Lady Loki. Like, okay, another female version of one of our phase one characters. Okay, I understand it's more complex than that. I understand people are like, Ironheart's different. She-Hulk's very different Hulk. Like, right. It's also in the name, She-Hulk. It's, it's right there. Like, Jane Foster is not actually Thor, but they're giving her Thor powers and giving her a hammer and everything. Like, you, you get my point there. And then in the case of this one, it's quite literally Loki, but very in a fashion that presents herself as female. So there you have it. This all leads to our big final moment where she initiates all of these time reset bombs, opens portals and just starts dropping them all over the place. My interpretation was dropping them all over the timeline in different locations. So... Big, gigantic variations are taken. Like, as it was established, these bombs reset and heal the timeline by disintegrating what's there. So if you take one where there's not a variation and you drop it there, it just disintegrates what was there, creating a very, very big variation in of itself. So if you take a ton of these deals, as it looked like, there was a whole lot of them, drop them everywhere, you create an enormous number of time variations TVA only has so much time before you hit that red line, as established earlier in this episode, it is not very long. It is not a long time before you hit that red line, and there's almost certainly not enough TVA agents with additional bomb th deals to reset all of this. So big idea at the end of this episode is, what was the plan? To destroy the timeline, to destroy reality as we know it, because Miss Minutes told us at the beginning, you have that Nexus event, crosses the red line, timeline is destroyed, and reality as we know it is destroyed, at least as defined by the TVA and the timekeepers. So what is the goal of this Loki, based off the clues of what was just told us at the beginning of the episode, to destroy the timeline, the sacred timeline, and reality as we know it, by creating a series of events that there's no way that the TVA could reset all of them in time, in which case, time and reality break into utter chaos a multiverse you might say what is the start of the multiverse of madness the place where spider-man has no way home maybe we just watched it based off the rules established in episode one and reaffirmed in this episode evil loki variant lady loki just acted as a time terrorist to create the multiverse. Because that's what we said at the beginning. Why was the sacred timeline created? 
because there was competing multiverse. Timekeepers wanted their timeline to lead. They won the battle, so they come together, create the second sacred timeline. Now we do the thing that undoes all that work. Multiverse, madness, chaos, lots of fun. So episode ends with Lady Loki opens a portal, waves at Loki phase one. Lady Loki walks through the portal. Mobius is running towards Loki. Please don't leave me. Please don't leave me. Loki, too mischievous. Way more intriguing to follow. Lady Loki variant. Follows Lady Loki variant. Episode ends. Alrighty, so what are my final closing thoughts and predictions for where all of this is headed? I sort of uh, alluded to it right there that essentially all of this is creating the multiverse and creating the chaos that will lead to Multiverse of Madness, Doctor Strange 2, as well as Spider-Man, No Way Home. Damage is being done to the timeline that's going to make things super duper duper interesting. I think a big part of the way this is going to play out is that we're going to, it's going to be revealed TVA aren't actually the good guys. Once again, I've been alluding to this all along. Timekeepers aren't actually these benevolent gods. They're just people trying to control things. I've heard some theories. Maybe Kang is a timekeeper, plays into it in some way. We know Kang is coming. We know Kang has already been cast. So if you read the t about the TV and the comics, Kang plays into it. If you read about the TV and the comics, She-Hulk plays into it. And so there's just a number of things. If you look at what we know is already coming, could tie into this show in a few different ways. But I think Loki or Loki's are going to go after the timekeepers and they're going to say that this the power that these guys are controlling is not good. There is no sacred timeline. That's ridiculous. And they're going to undo all of that that leads to the, the opportunity where we can hop realities and S Sam Raimi, Spider-Man can show up, hang out with Tom Holland for a little bit or whatever. Whatever is going to take place, it's able to take place because of what just did happen and what's going to happen over the next little bit of time. Even the people that, uh, their, their issue was that, so a lot of people really like Loki, but there was a handful of people that said, this undid the MCU, there's no stakes, urgency, nothing matters because it's all determined, everything like that. And, you know, you know, Doctor Strange said that there are, you know, 15 million options and there's only one where we make it. None of that really matters because that one was already predetermined by the timekeepers. So, okay, I, I can see what you're saying. And at the same time, if you're you're about to have episodes that undo all of this, to say that it is, everything is possible, and the TV, A, you have to think about it, they're not running parallel to our time. They're not really time travelers in that sense. They exist outside of our time. They're, they're The bubble of time is here and they're around it. Outside of that thing that we call time and time, outside of the construct that is time as we perceive it. So, so to them, the idea that uh, if you create multiverse, it's not, it, it opens up the possibility that all f options were available. All things could happen. All those multiverses, all the, every variant that could ever happen does in fact exist. So it recreates the multiverse as opposed to just having the one. So then all those options in the past could happen. Because it's past for me, it's past for you. It's not past for TVA separate outside of this. If Loki does this, multiverse is recreated. So even the complaint can be undone very easily. I, like I literally saw some people like, this ruined it. There's no way to fix it. They've introduced philosophy and time stuff that just can ruin the whole thing. No, that's not how time works. You're talking about people outside of time. Likewise, like, saw some people like, infinity stones don't mean anything anymore. You just throw them in a drawer. It's meaningless. They're just like a junk drawer. But they're not in our universe. They're not inside of the, the realm where the stones were created. So yeah, they don't work because they're not in the universe. <laughs> they have all these other potential universes. That's why they can throw them in the drawer because they're not where they're supposed to be. They would work great in the timelines they're supposed to be in. And so there's still, some of the criticisms I've seen, like I, I get why some people don't like where they're headed. Some ideas that are, I, I, there's a, like, I think there is some validity to like, careful MCU, careful, where are you going with this? I think being so reactionary is to just immediately go, infinity stones are in a drawer. You've ruined infinity. stones. I was like, no, they're, no, they're, we're outside of the re reality as we know it. We're in this other dimension thing, the time realm thing that's, it's not down the road from Earth. 
It's not, it's not like hiding in one of the moons of Jupiter. It's a whole other realm. It's outside of the universe. It's outside of it. So some, some of the stuff is kind of interesting conversations that I saw. Anyway, I really enjoyed the first two episodes. I saw this episode a week ago. Uh, I've actually watched this episode three times. I watched it twice while I still had access to it last week and wrote a ton of notes. And then I rewatched it this morning to shoot the review today because I wanted to be fresh. I wanted to factor in some of the conversation that I'd heard throughout the week and everything. And then I wanted to shoot the review right after I rewatched it a third time. So I'm really enjoying the show. I like where they're going. I love all the philosophy, the potential, the opportunities that once again, we can talk in the Winter Soldier wasn't one where you could do like a lot of fan theorizing because it's a little bit more straightforward than like the WandaVision or even kind of, you know, the nature of this show, it's straightforward, but there's also like, where is this going? What could it mean? Back in the Winter Soldier wasn't really like that. So I like that we're back to like, what could this mean? How's it going to tie in? Is it going to, who's going to be at the timekeepers? What's going to, I love all that fun stuff. I'm looking forward to watching a ton of videos with people's theories over the next week. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you thought down below in the comment section and keep talking movies, TV and Marvel way too much. See you next week.